On this week's tech demo, we are looking at the energy recovery system of a Formula One car, Albert Fabregat. Great Hello, to Donna. see you. My pleasure. Have you had a nice summer holiday? Yes, a little <laughs> bit busy, but nice holidays as well. Well, I can see you've been busy. <laughs> I've been doing some uh, bicycle riding. Absolutely, I cannot wait. I always look forward to a tech demo with you. Cannot wait to see what we've got in store. So energy recovery. Let's break that down and talk about energy recovery as a concept. So yep. explain what we've got here. I took this bicycle to uh, explain because many of you, maybe you are younger than me. Maybe you didn't uh, ride the bicycle with maybe. a dynamo. You remember the dynamos? Uh, maybe a little bit. That's, that's an energy younger. recovery system. <laughs> Very primary, but it's a recovery system that when we are riding the bicycle and we connect the dynamo, what we are generating is light. So we convert the speed, the inertia, the movement of the wheel in electricity. But we are slowing it down. We are slowing down. So without the dynamo connected, it's free, but when we connect the dynamo, it is slowing down. This is an important thing that we are using to recover and to convert the kinetic energy, that's important, kinetic decay, in electrical energy. That's a concept. So that is the concept of energy, um, energy recovery. Yep. In Formula One, we want to use that energy that we've recovered. Yep. So the car sends it to the battery here in the middle. Yeah, because we are, when we are braking, we are wasting energy. We are converting the kinetic energy, the movement of the car, in, uh, in heat through the brakes. So we want to recover part of this. How? Same system, same concept, but instead of cre uh, creating a light, lighting up the night, we are putting all this uh, power, all this electricity in a battery. So we have this energy and we can use it later. How? Through the A M G U K. That is a motor, motor generator, generator unit K for kinetic. Kinetic, exactly. So it's a motor as a generator. It's a generator because when we brake in, because we don't want to slow down the car in the middle of so we don't, in the middle of the straight. So we don't want to activate it there. We want to activate it together with the braking point. And then it's a motor. Why? Because all this energy that we are recovering, we are harvesting, we put it in a battery and we send it back to the engine. So this electric engine can help through the electrical motor, 120 kilowatts, can help the IC to move the car forward quicker and we move forward. I want to see it in action. <laughs> we, we, we understand how to recover the, the energy. And it's very simple. This is an engine that is connected to the IC. The, the IC is you pedaling. This is the pedals. Yeah. This is the IC of the bicycle. So very easy. We press the MG button and we just put power. And you see, the bicycle is moving. And it is moving. It's moving. It's just the throttle pedal. Here we have a pedal. Yeah. So it's, pedal. it's, it's moving. It's helping us because I'm sure you will be pedaling harder, but it's moving the car forward. Quicker. What happened when we break? What happened when we arrive at the end of the straight and we break? Very simple. We press the brake and we use the M2K to convert part of the kinetic energy working together with the brakes to generate energy and charge the battery. Like you see, charge this it is back a up. simulation because I don't want to speed up to 200 k per hour the bicycle. <laughs> That's <laughs> dangerous. So let me close the, uh, the but you see, when we break in and we press the MGU gate work, what are we doing? Filling it up. We're filling the battery. So this is a process that is repeating in every single corner because we use the power, the battery, the electricity to fit the electric motor to help the engine to move forward. So, so you push the button, but that's not really what happens in a Formula One car. There's a special configuration. Exactly. We don't want the driver to be there, like pressing a button. I say, now, now at the exit of the corner, because it's mainly where they use the M2K is at the exit of the corner. Well, if you have a, sli a slippery floor or they have traction problems, they don't want to have more power because it's going against so that. So we, we have more a slippery situation. No, 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 no. When the car is right, when the car is on, on place, then we press the throttle and we activate the M2K. And we start moving the thing. If we connect the wheel, we see that it's moving. If not, we are consuming energy. Then we arrive to the end of the straight, we push the brake hard and Back we recover again. energy. We recover energy. And in this process, it must be repeated in every single corner. So I imagine it's different when you're in quali mode and in race mode. Obviously, you want to be fast over just one lap in qualifying. But when it comes to a race, we're talking 
50 or yep. here in Belgium, 44 laps. So we need to be, be clever with how we harvest energy and then deploy energy. Because the, the regulations limit the quantity of energy that you can recover and limit the quantity of energy that can you deliver to the engine. So the teams need to manage. You can recover only two megajoules. Megajoules is the way what, that we manage, manage, um, measure the engine, measure, or yeah. the, the power, the energy. And you can recover maximum from the N2K two megajoules, and you can deliver four megajoules. So, so there's a compromise to be found It's a compromise. There. And when you have the battery uh, full up to the top, let me charge the battery, and you start a lap, if it's a race mode, you have to manage it because if you finish the lap and you flat out the completely the battery, you have no, you have a flat battery. When you start the following lap, you have no energy. Mm -hmm. So you have to always have a little bit in the tank. Exactly. And where we go to the qualifying lap is different. We go for one lap. So we put everything on that lap and we put all the energy on that lap. And if we finish uh, through the checkered flag and doesn't matter if you're doesn't empty. matter. Doesn't matter because we don't have another lap uh, following it. Well, I'm keen to see how that plays out on a circuit like here in Belgium. Yep. Spa function on such a long lap. I'm going to get a little uh, drawing board out for you. Yep. Bear with me, Albert. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I've got a map of the circuit oh. Spa-Francorchamps. You came ready, huh? <laughs> well, summer, summer. you brought this, I brought okay, that. Good, Not really, good. like for like. But I'm keen to see how it looks in terms of qualifying mode and race mode around a circuit like Spa-Francorchamps. Let's compare, which one do you want? Uh, race go, or qualifying? Let's go qualifying first. Let's go chronologically okay. through the weekend. Blue qualifying? Blue qualifying, red for race. Okay, so let's start. Let's do a lot because we can deploy up to four megajoules. The megajoules is the way that uh, to measure the energy, mm -hmm. but we can harvest only two megajoules. So we have to manage this energy differently. Across the lap. Across the lap. Okay. So if we are in quality, we want to do a complete lap and flat the battery. It doesn't matter. The following lap, we will spend the whole lap to cool down the tires yes. and to charge the battery, breaking a lot, just charging and charging and charging. So let's start a lap from La Source mm -hmm. when we have the car already Planted, straight with a good corner. traction and no sleep and no, uh, no traction problems. Around, no. Yeah, no drifting. So <laughs> we, de kind of we deploy electrical energy through the MQK, more or less till that point. Not up to the breaking point, a little bit earlier because we this is a long circuit, so we cannot deploy energy in every single uh, meter of the track. We need to manage. So qualifying mode, you're all in. You want as yeah. much power as possible. And in this area, till the breaking point, the IC is still pushing. Yes, the car is still traveling along. A stick, yeah. Accelerating, but with less power because we stopped the electrical M2K helping the IC, the engine. So race mode. Race mode. I'm saying yeah. I'm getting on at the same time. Yeah, it will be a little bit more difficult to oh, exit turn really one. Thin. Yeah, because it's more difficult to exit turn one. Yes. So you put it a little bit later. And what will happen at the straight? Yeah. Less there. You stop deploying energy because the energy we have in the battery, we have to manage it to arrive to the end of the lap with still some energy in the battery. Qualifying everywhere as much as I can. Full tilt. Even here, turn 10, pole 1. If I can do it flat out, if they can do it flat out, we'll see. Difficult, but if they can do it, I will start. In quality, you got to try. Putting energy <laughs> everywhere. And maybe I would be put a little bit less aggressive yes. with that. I'd probably yeah, go to there. Exactly. My pen is very thin like that. Yeah. And then back on it here a little bit. And but again, a little earlier. bit less. Exactly. And we should repeat this in every single part <laughs> of the circuit. I'm Everywhere. very good at this drawing. Less okay, energy deployed da, 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 during da, da, da. a race mode. To arrive here, to that point, because on the quality lap, I will arrive on zero energy in the battery, flat completely, and... I've got to do another 43 laps. Exactly. So you need to have a minimum energy here to start again and deploy energy on the straight. And sometimes you hear the engineers telling the drivers to empty the battery entirely during quality, you know, empty it all, exactly. empty it all. You can all a defend mode. If I want to overtake or defend from someone that is uh, trying to uh, overtake or take a position, I will harvest a little bit energy here, a little bit here, a little bit here, and I will deploy everything here on the straight up to the breaking point. Max so attack. I have a little bit more of a speed and acceleration at the very far end of the straight. And something that's interesting, when the cars are running into that braking zone, you often see the lights at the back of the car flashing. Exactly. Now, that's part of clipping. It's all, it's actually not, it's sort of telling someone behind. It's not the brake light. 
in certain manner, yes. Because when we stop deploying, the car is still accelerating, it's not braking, but we start deploying, stop deploying electrical energy through the M2K, obviously the acceleration is a little bit lower. So we are not gaining the same speed because we have less power, 120 kilowatts less power on, on the car. So you are telling the cars you have behind, look, I'm not going to be making quite as much progress as exactly. I have. Exactly. I'm not on the same program. The I'm not street. keeping the same acceleration. I will slow down a little bit the acceleration, not braking yet. And I just thought it was so it looked nice and oh. sparkly out on track. Yeah. <laughs> How fascinating. Such a compromise, such a job for the drivers and the teams to, to manage throughout the course of not just a qualifying uh, one lap, but yep. for a race like this around such a huge circuit like Spa Francorchamps. It is. It is more easier on uh, Ungaro Ring, for example, than Spa because Ungaro Ring, you can deploy in every single meter of the track, you can deploy electrical engine and you arrive to the checkered flag and you still have battery. And you still, still have energy in the battery. This circuit is a, it's a different It's a long beast, one, seven it? kilometers, yes. It certainly is. Albert, thank you so much. Another cracking technical demonstration.